let's have a conversation. Do you want to get rich when you're old and fucked up? One of the things that I have noticed, because I have categories of friends. I have some young friends who are in their 20s and 30s. I have some friends who are in my age group, 40 to 50 something. And I have friends who are 60 to 70 years old. And one of the things I have noticed, because you know, keeping up with my friends, uh, one of my friends who is 70 years old is in the hospital. And I went to visit him and we were just having a talk. And he said something that really, really got my attention. Uh, he was in the hospital and he said, he was talking about, he started his business when he was 28 years old and he became a millionaire by the time he was 35. And he was just looking back and he says, man, I got glad that I got rich when I was young, because right now I'm old and fucked up. Because he's got uh, a lot of problems. He's been in and out of the hospital the last few years. And even though this guy is quite wealthy, he's way richer now than he was when he was 35, but the quality of life isn't there. Because we were just talking, because you know, uh, his wife is like 20 years younger than he is. And he's just like, man, I am so glad. Cause we were just talking about it. Cause you know, he knows about my healthcare issues and stuff. And we were just sitting there and we were just thinking, cause you know, for me, I got well off in my thirties and I became a millionaire at the age of 42. And you got an option because you know, I know that I'm beating the dead horse about the stock because everyone's like stocks. Stocks are a way to get rich very slow. And by the time you become a millionaire with stocks, you're old and fucked up. And I, I, I really think about that because um, I really enjoyed my Craigslist protocols. When I made that first million, I went buck wild. I was fucking my ass off. And be honest, I can still fuck, but I can't fuck like I used to. Be straight up. Cause I used to be able to bang a chick. I mean, just beat that pussy up. Now I do Cadillac fucking. <laughs> I get in there and I hit it hard for about two minutes. Then I'm done. And I'm just keeping it real. So one of the things that I have come to understand and appreciate is you need to get your money younger. And if you're a young person, I have a message for you. Instead of messing around, going to the club, partying, hanging out, this is for my people in their 20s, you need to figure out a way to start a business so you can get you some money. Because, you know, um, because here's the thing, quoting one of my older neighbors, Miss Sally Mae Jones, if you live long enough, you're gonna get old. And I am under no delusion, I am 55 years of age. Between 55 and 65, my fucking game is gonna change. Hopefully I still will be able to fuck, but it's going to change because I remember, man, I was doing some crazy stuff at 42. I remember when I made that goal to do what I was going to do, this chick came over, she walked through the door and I had her stripped down naked and bent over the sofa and just banged her out right there. And you know, as a consequence of living and getting old, things change. Um, I am still in pretty good shape because when people meet me, they have no clue to how old I am. So I'm in pretty good shape, but the reality is 10 years from now, I am going to be 65. 
That's reality. 10 years from I'm gonna be 65. And I don't care how good you look, 65 is old. There's this guy who's doing these calisthenics and he's got a great body, but his face is fucked up. His mouth is fucked up, his tooth, his teeth are messed up. And I'm just sitting there like, yeah, you got a nice body, but you know, congruently, you wanna have the face, you wanna have the teeth game, you wanna have the body, and um, this is the reality. So you can keep playing games and you know, throwing money into the dollar cost averaging in the stock market, or you can make a decision to take control and to take charge of your life. Because I can tell you, getting money in your 40s is like way better. Like, I wonder how I would feel at the age of 55, I just started getting money. Because, you know, I've been driving BMWs since before I became a millionaire. Um, I, I wonder, because a lot of the things that I got to enjoy is because I had money. And, you know, once again, just looking at my friend in the hospital, he's 70 years old, and we were just talking about stuff because we keep it real. And he's 70 years old, he cannot fuck anymore. You know, he's been not been able to fuck for about five years. And he told his wife, he's like, look, if you need to go out and get you some dick, just go ahead and do it. Just don't let me know about it. We be having those kind of conversations. And um, he thinks she's doing it, but she's keeping it on the DL, you know. She just goes out, gets the dick and come back home. Cause he's like, I can't do it no more. And she's a, she's pretty, she's about, she's 50. And she's very hot and sexy, nice body. And I wonder, I really wonder what it is like to be that old and to have a partner that you can't do shit with. And I, I'm just sitting there cause like, like I said, I'm still in pretty good shape. I can still fuck, thank God. Um, but it ain't the same. It's just not the same. Like I said, I'd be Cadillac fucking. I'd be getting in there and I'd be doing that. I'd be making love. I don't be fucking. I'd be making love. A little swirl and stuff. Because honestly, I am just not in the physical shape that I used to be in. Because back in the day, I used to be diesel. I was benching like 450, squatting 700, deadlifting 800 pounds, overhead press 250. I was straight diesel. And this is some, this is a strange little story. My ex-wife, one day she called me and she said, I know you don't like me, but could you come fuck me? Because I used to put it on her. I used to put it on her. Like, and back then, and this is more me being real, I used to be able to get it up two to three times a night quite easily. I was a horn dog. Now, one and done, maybe sometimes two, sometimes two, but pretty much after I come, I'm ready to take a nap. And this is why, you know, all of my chicks understand that fucking is at nighttime. I am not gonna be busting nuts in the middle of the day and get sleepy. That's gonna just throw my schedule off. So what I like to do, what I like to do is make her come first so she gets off. Because essentially when you make a woman comes first, and she gets off, it makes her wanna continue to have sex with you because she knows that there's a payoff in it for her. So typically, you know, either oral or I got some toys, I'll make her come real hard and then I'll bust my nut. And that's something I've been doing for years because there ain't nothing, there's nothing more frustrating than a woman being fucking and she don't get to come. 
or she gets close and then you don't finish up the deal. But, you know, having these conversations, uh, and this is something you need to think about because no one else is talking about this. It's like, you know, I got a video talking about the fallacy of the young and rich. There are some hard charging people who are making money, who are building businesses, who got rich at a very early age. You know, they're 25 year old millionaires. They exist, but that ain't the norm. I've looked up the stats. Less than 1% of millionaires are under 35. The average age of a millionaire is 62. And one of the things I have seen, and I'm gonna go ahead and express this, another reason that you want to get money early. I had a heart attack in 2019. I got the best medical care possible. So that's another reason you wanna have money so you can get top quality medical care. Cause like I said, I, as I expressed in the video, if I had been broke dick Danny living on the south side, you know, rest in peace Kevin Samuels. Um, Kevin Samuels got transported to Piedmont Hospital, which is not that far, but I feel that if Kevin had got transported to Northside, because I feel that the ambulances have zones where they're gonna take you, because um, I don't know what kind of heart attack he had, because one of the things is, because I was working out and I was in pretty good shape, is my heart attack came in stages, because I noticed something, I started burping. I never had chest pains, I mean, never had chest pains. I started burping, I was fully aware of, that something wasn't right, but my heart attack didn't just jump on me. It just happened over a period of time, because I was working out, and at the time my girlfriend came home and she looked and she says, you don't look right. And she sat with me and then, you know, we got to the point where about 30 minutes after she came down, we went to the hospital and that's when shit started really rolling. I reached a point where I couldn't breathe. So fortunately for me, my heart attack didn't just jump on me. Maybe in the case of Kevin Samuels, his heart attack just jumped on him and he didn't even have time for medical intervention. I don't know. But once again, Kevin Samuels, he's a millionaire. And that money didn't do him a bit of good with his bad health. I want you to think about that. Kevin Samuels, famous, doing videos, and he had bad health. And look what happened to him. So once again, you want to get money. I'm just speaking, you know, plainly, and you want to get your money early. You do not like, you know, Dave Ramsey and all of these people talking about investing in the stock market. I am not 60 years old. 60 years old is five years away from me, right? And I am aware, I'm acutely, uh, this is something that's kind of weird. And if you're getting older, chime in in the comments. I have noticed that my beard has started growing much faster. One of the reasons I shave is my beard is completely white. I just don't like that look. And I've noticed that my nose hair, I actually had to order uh, some nose clippers because my nose hair, it was getting out of control. And one of the things that my friend told me, he said, he's 70, he said when he turned 62, he started having hair grow out of his ears and he has his wife cuts it out. So there's a lot of changes that happen because like my beard, I have to shave literally every other day or every day because I just don't like, it's, it's all white. I don't like it, I don't, I don't like the look at all. Because, you know, earlier videos, I used to sport a goatee and a beard when it was all black, but I just don't like that white look. And it makes me look old, and I am a little self-conscious about it. I'm just sitting there like, because I like rolling up on people and folks have no clue to how old I am. I, I like that. And, you know, so I'm not, you're never gonna see me sporting a goatee or a beard. And that was one of the things that got me when I was in the hospital. I remember I was in the hospital for three weeks and all this grew out and shaving. It took me 45 minutes to shave because I was so weak. And I'm just, you know, trying to tell you guys, you wanna stop 
fucking around, you want to build something, you want to start getting your money because you know, money factors into early medical care intervention. It, it makes a difference. It, it just makes a difference. So if nothing else, because you know, I hear a lot of guys like, I don't want to get money so some chick can like me. It ain't about, like when I was really rolling on the Craigslist protocols, these chicks didn't know I had money. They knew that I had a nice place to live, but they didn't really, really know because I never introduced money to the conversation. I never even brought it up. So I never used money to get women. And I will share something with you. This is from my sugar baby research. I personally will never pay a chick $1,000 to fuck her once. I would never do it. And I was having these kind of conversations with a chick. It was like $800 to $1,000 to fuck. And then I would write back, do you understand the price of pussy at its all time low? There's no way in hell I would ever do it. And you know, it got contentious because these chicks feel that their pussy is priceless. And this is what's funny. I remember this one chick I was talking about and I asked very specific questions like, when's the last time you got fucked? And she said last weekend. So she was fucking someone the weekend for free, but she wanted to charge me a thousand dollars for the same pussy. And I was just sitting there like, there's something ain't right about that. Because um, once again, I've had these, you know, I'm not sugar daddy material at all. And I've had a lot of them tell me that. You don't understand how the sugar daddy, sugar baby dynamic works. What you're supposed to do is to be there for me when I need you, whether I have sex with you or not. And I'm like, wait a minute. So I'm supposed to just give you money whenever you need it. And you might give me some pussy here or there. Yeah. I'm like, how many men are doing that shit? If you've been a sugar daddy or you've been caking off these chicks and you ain't been getting no pussy, put that in the comments because that's hilarious to me because here's my orientation. I used to write ads on Craigslist. I used to get beautiful women to come to my place and fuck me for free. Why in the hell I'm going to get some bitch that, 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 that makes no sense to me. That makes no sense to me. And to actually get a little deeper, I went on to Google and found out that the average prostitute charges 150 to 200. The average prostitute. Because a lot of these um, sugar babies want to charge high-end escort prices, but here's the thing. If they don't find you attractive, they're not gonna fuck with you. So a high-end escort, if you got the money, they drop in those panties. But a lot of these girls want to fuck someone that they normally would fuck anyway and get paid on the side. And I was just sitting there like, this is crazy. This is crazy. And I am so glad that I had the experience of the Craigslist protocols and all of those memories and all those experiences because um, I was telling those chicks, I was like, Girl, your pussy ain't worth a thousand dollars. And one chick got mad and she's like, you're not sugar daddy material. I was like, you're a delusional bitch. How many men have a thousand dollars to give you every time they see you? If they saw you four times a month, that's $50,000 a year. That's ridiculous. That's just, that makes no sense to me. Um, and then uh, when I, I started getting petty, I started showing them my ex-girlfriend pictures of her. I was fucking her for free. And you want me to fuck you because you're less than? You, I mean, I was just writing these chicks. And one of the things is, I have an understanding that the average man in America is weak. Because this is why all these chicks have these attitudes because men are saying, bitch, you ain't worth it. They're not saying that. They're like, oh baby, oh baby, please, please, baby. Let me, let me sniff the pussy. Oh yeah, oh it smells so good. Oh it smells so good, you just let me sniff the pussy. 
can I slide the head in? Oh no, you need more money? Here you go. I'm just sitting there like, you know, it's very interesting, you know, taking all these perspectives in and having that money gave me the confidence to pull off a lot of those things. So once again, you got an option. You can get money when you're old and fucked up. And what I'm seeing is between the ages of 45 and 65, for me, I was 53 when I had my heart attack. And the gout, I had my heart attack. I, you know, if it had gout, and that's been the extent of it so far. But five years, I'll be 60. I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. I'm just sitting here, and this is why I try to live my best life because uh, the gout thing scared the shit out of me. I went online and some people were in wheelchairs because of gout. And what I've come to understand is my gout is moderate. And that's one of the reasons that I only recently got treatment because typically, I would get like a little pain in my knee and it would like be there for two or three days and it go away. And that's typically the extent of my gout attacks. But this year, that shit got intense. It was like, I remember it was this knee, this hand, this wrist and elbow at the same time. Once again, you can get money when you're young and you can really enjoy it or you can get money when you're old and fucked up because uh, I am entering the old and fucked up territory just to keep it a buck. Heart attack, gout. Here's something else that's happening. And I think it's happening because I'm not working out and I'm gonna start working out later on this month is I have digestion issues. If I eat more than one meal a day, I get a case of gas and start burping. It's stupid. And I'm just sitting there and I don't know because I started doing the intermittent fasting and I don't know if that messed up my system, but I cannot eat more than one meal a day. If I eat more than one meal a day, I'm gonna get mad indigestion and um, it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. And you know, like my girl and some, you know, she'll wanna go out and stuff and I've already eaten for the day. And we'll go out and I'll get her some and I'll just sip on some water or wine or something because it's painful, it is just painful. And one of the things that I've done to mitigate that, and this is a tip, if you're having those kind of issues, drinking hot water, you know, just, I've got a kettle that I boil water in, and I drink it hot water like it's coffee. And typically once a day is enough to keep the, the gas and indigestion away. If I drink two, and this is something else that's funny, I've noticed this. Since I've been drinking hot water, I have a lot more cum. I mean, like, because this is something else that happened. I got to a point where I would come and like just a little bit would come out, right? And since I've been drinking this hot water, I'm like, I was fucking last night. And it was a lot. And she was like, we fucked just the other day. You reloaded. So hot water. Go ahead and Google the benefits of hot water, drinking hot water. It helps with digestion. It helps with a lot of things. And in my case, it has given me a lot of cum. I mean, a lot. Because like I said, I reached a point where, you know, I would have sex and I would come and the chick, she'd be like, did you come? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because it wouldn't be that much and it was very thick. But since I've been drinking hot water, splash, splash, skeet, skeet, I'm like, and I've just noticed that because one of the things is when you get old and fucked up, you notice you, you notice the changes because um, one of the things with the gout, I feel that I had a, a mild form of depression because um, I understand why people with chronic pain commit suicide. I understand that now. And I didn't even have chronic pain. I had moderate pain, but every day you're hurting, you're in pain. Who wants to live like that? Who wants to live like that? So yeah, guys, you want to go ahead at your age of 20, be like Christian Guzman. He started his business when he was a teenager and he's like 27. I don't know. I think 27, 28. I don't think he's 30. He's a multimillionaire. 
this is when you want to get your money so you can take the trips you can fuck i'm like so glad that i did all those things i am so, i have not one regret not one regret because at the end of the day and this is something i learned from working in the hospital and talking to old people typically you don't regret the shit that you did you regret the shit you never did that tends to be the biggest regrets you regret things that you didn't do things you wanted to do and I, I'm so grateful that I made the decision at the age of 32 to start pushing really, really hard. Uh, that was one of my better decisions, starting to get into that business life, start learning about sales and marketing. I mean, it is hands down one of my top decisions. I put this top number two the number one decision was to start a business that is my best decision in life and yeah you know you got a decision you can keep messing around you can keep playing games and this is the thing that's going to happen sally may jones if you live long enough you're going to get old facts you're going to get old in 10 years, I will be 65 years of age. That's old. I don't care how good, hopefully, I still look. 65 years of age is old. It is. And hopefully, I will still be able to fuck. Hopefully. I mean, who knows? Like, my friend, you know, like I said, we have real conversations. He, he's giving his wife permission to go out and get some dick because he can't he can't dick her down no more. And I can understand because from what I see, they have a really good marriage. And when you get old, companionship is extremely important. When I was a kid and I used to go visit old people and talk to them and hang out with them, it was hard as hell to leave because they didn't want you to go. They didn't want you to go. So this is one of the reasons I have been keeping girlfriends and more than likely in the future, I will have a wife. I will have a wife. And you know, one of the things that's so funny that I see in the forums that some women, it's like, they want to marry someone their age because they don't want to quote, be taking care of anyone, right? But these bitches will let someone take care of them in a heartbeat. It's kind of funny because this is one of the reasons I'm going to start working out again. Because uh, now that I'm past the gout attacks and stuff and I'm, I'm getting medication, I got to set up another appointment to get my medication. Um, but, you know, for my future wife, I owe it to her to be in the best shape that I am because, you know, I'm old and fucked up, just facts. And I am so glad I did all the stuff that I did. I'm so glad I went to London and Japan. I, I, I am so glad I did all that shit when I was young. Cause when you're young, you don't have these issues. Like I noticed when I turned 35, I woke up and my leg was hurting and I, I, I couldn't figure out why. So, you know, 35 to 40, you'll wake up and you'll just, be hurting, you, you didn't even do shit to yourself. And then 45 to 50, shit will start happening. And you know, 55 to 65, I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's coming. I know something's coming, but I don't know what's coming. And um, once again, you got a decision. You can go ahead and get your money together when you're young and you're able to enjoy it and enjoy your life. Or you can be investing in the stock market, dollar cost averaging, and at the age of 65, you're an old and fucked up millionaire. One of the things I liked about living in zip code 30327, you would consistently see old couples driving Ferraris. There was this couple, they had a, a drop top Porsche like mine, and they'd be riding around, and they looked really good. They were. I would say in their 70s, but they look, look really good. Money makes a difference when you're getting older. 
it makes a huge difference. You know, you can't debate me on that. It makes a difference because I saw a lot of old people who were pretty spry and uh, doing well because they had money. Money makes a difference because one of the reasons I look the way that I do is one of the reasons I look the way that I do is I have no stress. The most stress that I've endured in recent years was that car rental business. But aside from that, I have absolutely no stress. I don't worry about stuff. I don't worry about paying. I have no stress, none. And this is one of the reasons that I, I was so um, brazen with these sugar babies and telling them the truth because I'm like, I'm not doing anything that's gonna stress me out. I feel very sad for a guy that would pay a bitch a thousand dollars to fuck her one time. You've been doing a lot of shit wrong. There's something wrong with you. If you feel that a bitch is worth a thousand dollars for one time to get in that pussy. I'm like, there's something wrong with you. You don't have relationship skills, you don't have friendship skills, you don't have interpersonal, there's something fucked up about you that you would pay a bitch that kind of money just to get in that pussy. That's, that's just crazy to me. But like I said, one of the reasons I look the way that I do is I don't have no stress, none, no stress. I don't worry about paying my rent, I don't have, you know, most of my most of my cars are paid for. I got a loan on the Mercedes, which I'm probably just gonna pay that off. Um, no stress. I don't worry about nothing. Let me tell you the shit that I do. Like recently, right there are some um, bags of clothes I'm taking to Goodwill because I made a decision to change up my YouTube wardrobe. If you've noticed. I've been wearing the black shirt a lot or the white shirt, the crop, that's by design. And I'm going through my closet and I'm just getting rid of shit that I don't wear. And over there, I just bought five pair of brand new shoes because at times I get bored with stuff and I was like, let me change it up. And I'll just, I spent like $700 on those shoes and I'm getting ready to give a whole bunch of stuff to Goodwill because I can write this stuff off as wardrobe for YouTube. And, um, once again, I don't have no stress, and that's where you want to be when you get 55, 60. You don't want to be stressing about nothing. You don't worry, you don't want to be worried about paying bills. You don't, you don't, like, I feel that if I had stress in my life, I would look older than I really am if I had stress. Like, I just don't have no stress. And one of the reasons I'm having this conversation with you guys is to give you perspectives from experience. If you live long enough, you're going to get old. This is a fact. This is reality, okay? And the decisions that you make today have ramifications for 10 years. So decision for me to come on YouTube ramifications where I made a lot of money. I did really well. I've been working for home for the last 13 years. Uh, this is one of the things like when I get up in the mornings, I may wake up at 730, but I don't get out to bed until 839. I just lay around, play around on my phone. I have no stress. That's where you want to be. You don't want to have all this stress, man. You don't. I'm telling you. Just telling you, man, I'm letting you know, because uh, 10 years from now, I will be 65 years. I don't even know if I'm gonna still be on YouTube. I have no clue. Uh, I need to sit down and actually think about that from a long-term perspective, because, you know, just for the people who are pocket watching, let me go ahead and just say this. Typically, the money that I spend this year is money that I made last year, so, and if I wanted to retire, sit down and do nothing, I could to Mr. I have a net worth of eight figures and I ain't rich. Bitch, if you truly had a net worth of eight figures, you would be extremely wealthy compared and contrast to the average millionaire. 
And that's how I know these people be lying in the comments. Because once again, businesses is what put me here. A business is responsible for this lifestyle. And I'm gonna keep preaching that, I'm gonna keep talking about that, and all of you stock market fuckers who ain't gonna never get rich, you think you're getting rich, but you're just wasting time. You're just wasting time. Just wasting time. You thinking you're getting rich. I have a video that's going to pop up on uh, Glendon Cameron School talking about if you want to get rich, start a business. The statistical analysis, the data all says the same thing. If you want to get rich, period, start a business. Start a business. If you Google the world's 1,000 richest people, they all have businesses. They're not in the fucking stock market, you dumb monkeys. Oh, I'm in the stock market. I'm putting five dollars a month in the stock market and I'll be rich 30 years from now. That's bullshit. Like I said, the whole thesis of this video is you want to get rich while you're young. Preferably in your 30s or 40s so you can enjoy yourself. Because you get rich when you're old and fuck up. Yeah, you got money, but you can't do shit. In case of my 70-year-old friend, he got a hot Hot young wife, he can't fuck. Facts. Reality, man. Reality.